Okay, we've resolved the BC AD problem in our, what do you want to call it, our own modern system versus Paul. In order to show you how that gets resolved, I gotta go to the Bible's own numbers going all the way back to Adam. It's a far smaller problem than we thought and the only reason why we don't know it's a small problem is that we don't know the Bible's meter. Um, we could have figured it out without the meter if we just plotted the Bible's dates the way the Bible says them, but we don't do that. Instead we go to Dear Dr. So-and-so and we use astronomy and astrology and people who don't know how to add and subtract like Josephus and Eusebius and all these other hoary heads who we call respectable and instead of respecting the Bible. I'm sorry, I'm going to be real strong about this at the beginning. The reason we've had problems with the dates is due to scholarship ineptitude. There's no other excuse for it. If you went to the Bible and you looked just at the Bible and before you looked at anybody else, you'd have gotten the right timeline. And you'd know everything that I've got here because this is where I got it from. All right, all these dates that are plotted are plotted strictly from the Bible. The Bible uses solar years, but scholars use lunar years, and so that's why all their numbers are wrong. Not all scholars, some scholars. Okay? And that's why your so-called respectable people in the past, especially in Catholicism, screwed it up. Okay? And that's not to, you know, single out the Catholics, because the dispensationalists and the Calvinists have also screwed it up. Alright? And that's the reason why we got this problem. So the Bible gets blamed when the Bible's right and everybody else is wrong. So, using solar years, you go back to Genesis 5 and you add up the begats. That's all I did here. When you do that, you see that there's a pattern of how God orchestrates time. So that's what this worksheet is. You can download it yourself. There are formulas in the worksheet. See, as you can see up here. All right, that's a formula. All right, so you can edit the formulas if you want and save yourself some time. Also in the video description, there is a link to the Bible verses I use to get these numbers. So you can look at them yourself and see if Brain Up made a mistake, because I'm certainly not, you know, exempt. If the scholar screwed up, well, then a Brain Up can screw up. What's embarrassing is that a Brain Up can get it right and the scholars didn't. So if I made a mistake, please tell me. And the reason why I think this is so important to do is that all the scholars in the past who are dead now and in heaven are probably praying to God, oh please God, don't let people keep on repeating my mistakes because I was respectable when I was down here in the body. In other words, we should be going back de novo to the Bible. So I don't want to die, because who knows when I'll die. I don't want to die and get up there and say, have to say to God, well, I didn't do my homework. And then face all those scholars who wish I had done my homework. So I'm doing my homework. You do yours or not, but the way you can do it and save time versus what I did is in the video description. Okay, enough. Adam, 130 years old, right here, see? 130, right here in the middle, year of the world, 130. That is the year he became super mature. He had to do it by the end of the first 490. All right. Now why that is, is in my Yapping Most High playlist. You can look there starting at episode 10. There's a separate playlist for episode 10 and learn about the 490s. I'm not going to go through that math here. I'm going through something else. That's, he's 130 years old, the big ads. Okay. There's a 490 because you have to track to that. This is a voting period for believers. I've already explained that in my other playlist. You'll have to look at them. That ended 70 years later. This is the precedence for the sabbatical years for Israel. And then the next guy who wins a 490 is Jared. His son is Enoch. And Enoch has his kid in 687 from Adam's fall. And Jared has his kid who is Enoch. 
622 years from Adam's fall. That's 490 years from this point. So history got to continue 490 plus 130 to here, and the deadline occurred here, and Jared met the deadline, so Enoch was born. Of course, we know Enoch, you know, super matured because he was just translated. All right, you with me on the on how to use this? You're the world using the begats, this whole yellow column in the middle, column G. All right? You see that. Now, time is orchestrated by God, shown by various formats in explicit text and meter, but the meter tracks these years all the way back to Adam, starting in Psalm 90. That's why I've been making so many boring videos since the year 2008. That's what I've been doing. Okay, first voting period and began for unbelievers. It's a 50-year window. This too is precedence for the sabbatical years of Israel because those sabbatical years bought the extra 50 years. And I go through the math of that right here in A1. You can click on that and you can see the math. Okay, you can see the whole set of rules and the math. Just click on the cell in A1 and download that Word doc and it'll go through all the math for you. So you can see why I'm getting this. Okay, believer voting window is, is here, but there's an unbeliever voting window here. The unbeliever is voting to be saved. That's real important. The first 1000 ended in what we call 3106 BC, and that's going to become important to resolving the BC AD dates. Okay, that ends here. 50 years for the unbeliever, first 1050, God orchestrates time in 70, uh, in 490 plus 70 plus 490 year units, totaling 1050. But he tracks whether the 1050 can even occur by means of the 1000s. All right? So there couldn't be a bo vo believer voting, unbeliever voting window here in cell G27 if somebody didn't super mature enough to get a 1,000 year time grant, which the guy who did that, you can pretty well bet, is Enoch. Because, you know, the Bible just says he was translated. He was so, you know, mature. Okay? So you'll notice this is 3106 BC, 3056 BC. All right? That's the first 1050 from Adam. All right, and then the timeline keeps going. Now, what I want you to focus on here is Adam was 130 years when he did this. So that extended time an extra 130 years. The question is that that first 130 years, as it were, isn't paid for. God balances time like we balance our checkbooks. All right. So when you get to this 1,000, well, there's this problem of, well, how much time is over or short versus the people who won the grants. Okay, and the last guy who won the grants is Enoch, and so we got 687 years over. So we're, we're safe here, okay? We're going past time here. But he won it within the 1,000, so the 1,000 can exist. That's how come we're all still here. All right, the next guy to do the, get this 1,000 is Noah. Okay, now here's what's important about Noah. See this right here? That's his birth from Adam. This is in the Bible. You count up the begats, you get to Genesis 7, and you figure out, you can figure out when he was born. And I do that. Your video description has the link to Brain Out Facts 6a so you can see the Bible verses. Notice that year, 1056. The time ended 1050. 1056 is six years later. Bible is going to track that because Noah's the guy who got in the boat. It's because of him that the world got to continue. All right, it's real easy to see he got a 1000. But the Bible is tracking, and I didn't know this till a few days ago. The Bible is tracking the 1050s, not only in this sense, but it's also tracking the 1050s from birth of people who got 1,000 year time grants. That was a real surprise and I only learned that during this past week. 
you'll notice that it's six years late. It's tracking from his birth, but it's six years late. You know, we're all saying, well, how come the trib, how can you be sure that, you know, the church is pre-trib, la, la, la. There's a precedence that goes all the way back to Noah. Israel had a timeline that she was on. She was on that timeline because of this rule about super maturing. And God is keeping the, balancing the time books like you balance your checkbook. And what he's saying here is that Noah won the grant, but now it's timing it back to his birth. It's retroactive, back to his birth. He's seven years late. It says 1056, but it's really the beginning of 1057 because um, Noah's birth is on what we would call Passover. Okay, and you can tell that by, by the, the way the, the calendar for the flood works on, on his age. Okay. And there'll be a link in the video description on that called Flood Chrono Revised. All right. So the Bible's going to measure 1050 from this guy. All right. My calculator's going to keep disappearing. So 1056 from Adam's fall, not from his age, from his fall. Bible measures from Adam's fall. Plus another 1050 means the next benchmark is 2106. And you've kind of seen this before because I've sort of walked you through this before, but I'm doing it now for a different reason. 2106 takes us past 20,000 or 2,000, the second, you know, thousand year time grant with its own, um, you know, limitation. Okay, that's a contiguous deadline. But that's not civilization. The civilization started here. That's the second 1050 from Adam, all right? And therefore, the voting period for the unbelievers started here and ended here. Now, we said it was 2106, okay? 2106 was 1050 plus 1056, which was the birth of Noah. So 1056, birth of Noah, plus another 1050 equals 2106 and it's still notice still six years late that's the birth of Jacob remember it said in the story of Genesis 21 and 22 that Isaac had you know married Rebecca when he was 40 and they still didn't have kids and so Rebecca wanted to know why. And then when they finally do have kids in Genesis 22, it's, it's really hard. It's a really hard pregnancy for her because she's got twins in her womb. One will become a believer. One will stay an unbeliever, namely Esau. Jacob was the believer. Jacob is born in 2106. 2106 was also the same year the Menu, Mentuhotep united the kingdom of Egypt which is going to matter because of course that's where Jacob's going to end up going all right so here's Jacob he's born 2106 all right so that's our next stop we had gone with 1056 plus 1050 to get to Jacob now we do it again plus 1050 and that takes us to temple dedication which you'll see remember 3156 is the next stop so we go here, and we have more history occurring, and I've plotted it by these time deadlines. Okay, the gold is for the 490, and the green is for the 1000. Okay, that's the deadline for somebody to grow up is 3000, measured without the 50-year appendages. Okay, 3100 is the sum of 2050, okay, and um, 2150, rather, and 50. Another 1050, see? 2050 plus 1050 is 3100. So that's the next deadline for civilization, irrespective of everybody else. Okay, now I want you to start noticing something here. See? That's the contiguous deadline. This is the new civilization unit the voting period for the unbeliever is occurring right in here look how important this is 
Remember, we're, we're going to be coming up on 3,156. That's 3,100. This is 3,150. Look what happened. 3,066, David's born. These are all Bible numbers. He becomes king at Hebron in 3096, just before the deadline. Remember very carefully, four years here. Okay? Just before the deadline, he becomes king. Okay? Now, 3096 measures a different 1050. 3096 minus 1050 is going back to 2046. What was 2046? Sorry, this is so complicated. But God is balancing time. 2046 takes us back to Abraham. That's when Abraham super matured. So 1050 from Abraham, see, he super matures when Noah's 490 runs out. Abraham is maturing in the soap opera of time in 2046, and 1050 from that, David is crowned king of Hebron. Right here. See? 2046 plus 1050 is 3096 just in time for civilization to continue so that the unbeliever can be alive and vote right here. And of course David becomes king of all Israel four years later, or seven years later. So notice that. Four years before the end of the unit and then seven years after he's crowned he becomes king of all Israel just outside. See, 3103, 4103 is when Christ is going to be born, but that's going to—that's what brings us into the BCAD um, correction. Okay, 3096, four years later, is 3100. David is king of all Israel thir three years later. So we've got a total of seven years elapsed here, but this is four years before that, and that's real important. Okay, Christ according to the Bible, I don't know why people don't know this, has to be born 1,000 years after David's crowned over king of all Israel. Okay, Bible's real clear on that too. I don't know why scholars don't know this, but this is the deadline. All right, David retires at age 70, does not die at age 70, he retires 3136 from Adam. Okay, but he dies 3143 from Adam. He dies at age 77, not age 70. The scholars don't seem to know how to add and subtract the numbers in the Bible, which are in 1 Kings chapters 1 through 6 and 1 Chronicles 1, uh, uh, chapter 22 through the end of the book. That tells you what David did during his seven years of retirement. Then 1 Kings 2.39 says three years after David died, Shimei was executed. So the fourth year after David died, Solomon began the temple. And that's where our BCAD conversion begins. Okay, that's, that's the whole story right there. The three and a half years that Solomon delayed building the temple. See, remember I said... 3156 minus 1050. Well, how come it's not working? 3156 minus 1050 is the birth of Jacob. God is tracking time to Jacob. We are still seven years late. We we're seven years late at Jacob's birth. And as you can see here, we're still seven years late here. When Moses' personal 490 ends, that's when the temple was dedicated. Okay, but David had been dead since 3143. Okay, that's 13 years after David's death. Why didn't Solomon start building the temple and finish it by 3150? See, David dies right here, 3143. Okay, that's during the believer vote, unbeliever voting window. 3143 plus 7, the years it took to build the temple, would have taken you to 3150. And by the end of the third 1050 from Adam, the temple would have been built, could have been dedicated. Now, if that had happened, 
Christ would have still had to be born by this date. Okay, um, when did David become king over all Israel? Right here. Christ still has to be born a thousand years after David was crowned kingship in order for the second thousand to renew. Okay, but he also has to die by a thousand years. This is the deadline in Daniel 9.26 is based on this, this calculation. The 62nd week is based on a thousand years plus that date you see highlighted in cell I-99. That's the outer deadline of time in Daniel 9.26. It took me about almost two years to figure that out because of the scholar mistakes with respect to David. Okay, well then, even if the temple had started construction after David's death, and it couldn't start any earlier because God told David in 2 Samuel 7, Hi, I'm going to have the temple built, and you're, you're going to be the progenitor of Messiah, but it has to wait until after you die. Well, God controlled when David died. Solomon still could have finished it by 3150, but didn't. But Christ would still have to be have to die by the thousandth anniversary of David's death. And that's played on in Luke 1, that's played on in Isaiah 53, that's played on in Daniel 9, all of it by the meter. Luke 1 is more specific because it's saying Christ is the 77th son. It's a play on this. Okay, but still, that's seven years from there to here. But the temple isn't dedicated until the 1050th anniversary of Jacob's birth. Uh-oh. So we have a 13-year difference instead of what should have been a 10-year difference. See? Look. 3143 is when David dies. The temple could have started the next year and been done here. But instead, it's done here. Temple is dedicated in 3156. Solomon is waiting three and a half years to even start construction. That's the problem. If he had started construction in the year David died, then Christ would have been born, would have died on the anniversary of the start of the temple's construction. You get me? Are you following me here? The temple should have started construction and finished by 3150. Okay, fine. If he had at least started the construction, then Christ would have been born on the thousandth anniversary of David's death and also been born on the thousandth anniversary of the temple construction start because Christ is the temple the temple depicts. And everything would have been fine. But... Solomon waited three and a half years before he even started the construction. That's 1 Kings 6, 1. And Bible makes a big stink about that by saying fourth year of Solomon. It's the 11th year of Solomon, but it's the fourth year of Solomon after David's death at the beginning of the year because it's the month of Ziv. All right? So this is where the BCAD problem really begins. Because what happened was, and I'm kind of truncating the answer here, what happened was when the Catholic scholars and the other scholar sense look at the Bible, they look at this weird 1 Kings 6.1, as far as they're concerned it's weird. They think it's a scribal error. And when they try to add up the numbers before 1 Kings 6.1 versus after 6 first king 6 1 they always come up with a three and a half year anomaly because the deadline for Christ's birth shifted up three years due to the delay in the construction of the temple the temple should have started here in 3143 when David died that's when it should have started but it didn't start until 3146 See, it started three years later. That's 1 Kings 6, 1. Go look it up. Three years after 3143 is 3146. And then 
It finishes off seven years later, and then Solomon waits another three and a half years before he dedicates the temple in the 1050th anniversary of Jacob's birth. Now, did God tell him to do that, or was Solomon having a brain fart with God? Well, I don't know the answer to that yet. But see, the temple construction began right here, cell G105. That's cute. That's cute. I didn't notice that until just now. Paul uses a 105 meter to make us think about this very fact. That's interesting. Okay, temple construction started in 3146 instead of starting in 3143. You got that? That's what's creating the three-year BCAD variance because when scholars are going back and they're trying to add up the begats like I'm doing here, and then they're trying to you know, reconcile the timeline from Adam all the way to Christ, they can't do it. They can't do it because they're looking at the Moses numbers, and they're right to do that. Moses even does the same thing. They're looking at the Moses numbers, okay, Egypt, here's the Exodus in 2066, and that, Moses' own numbers, using all the numbers prior to David, you get 1440 B.C. You really do. That This is what hung me up for the longest time. All right? But the timeline shifts due to David dying and Solomon waiting three years to build the temple, to start building the temple. So what should have been 1,440 years to Christ ends up being 1,437 years to Christ because of this three-year difference. All right? It's a real loss of time. Now, if you were, instead of, you know, if you just used the Bible's own numbers, you'd notice this difference. Okay, and if you knew about the meter and you knew about God's rules for time, this wouldn't be a problem. You'd understand what happened. Of course, we don't use BCAD in the Bible. It's just years from and years from Adam. It all reconciles fine. Okay. See, all these numbers reconcile just fine if you just use the Bible. But if you're trying to convert from B.C. to A.D., you have a hickey here going back from the Exodus because you come up with 14, 1440 B.C. that way. And that does work. But the timeline had to, had to shorten due to David's death. So Christ has to be born three years earlier than what would have been expected based on the Exodus. See, this was the Exodus was timed based on a prophecy about Messiah also. Moses writes Psalm 90 in 1400 BC. He's writing the 1050th year of the flood, which you would know that if you knew the meter and you and you plotted out the Bible's numbers like I'm doing. Therefore, 10, 1400 B.C. minus 350 equals 1050 B.C., which is the year that scholars routinely say, and rightly so, was when Israel rejected God as king and, and Saul took over. Okay? But, because they get David's death date wrong, they don't notice that there's a three-year shortage, you know, the way it really exists. They know that there's a three-year problem, and they just lop off three years and say Christ was born 4 B.C. because they don't know what to do with it. But here's why it occurs. David is, dies 3143, but the temple doesn't start getting constructed until three and a half years later. So it's on time relative to Jacob, right? 3156 minus 1050. It's on time relative to Jacob, but it's not on time relative to when the Messiah has to be born anymore. The numbers can't reconcile now because David died in 3143 and the temple didn't start construction until 3146. So that's why we end up saying that Christ has to be born 4 BC because all the scholars, when they're trying to do all these numbers down to Christ, there's this anomaly here between David's death and the start of temple construction. And they don't know what to do with it because all of a sudden now all the Bible numbers you know, from David forward don't jive with the Bible numbers before David. 
there's a three-year variance. That's why there's a three-year variance. But the scholars didn't keep adding the numbers just based on Bible. Okay? They, they made shortcuts and they used lunar years and they did all kinds of, Dear Dr. So-and-so did this timeline and instead of doing the Bible de novo, they just used somebody else. And so they were never able to reconcile this problem. They didn't know that this was a problem. And then when they get to 1 Kings 6.1, okay, which is here in cell G105, when they get to 1 Kings 6.1, because they can't reconcile it, they say that 1 Kings 6.1 is a scribal error. And you'll see that in all of your common lexicons about it. All right, this is, you know, standard scholar spin on 1 Kings 6.1. Oh, it's a scribal error. No, it's not. God's making a point. Whenever you get a number in the Bible that doesn't make sense immediately, God is stressing something about time in that verse that you need to study. And that's what happened to me. It took me a year, easily a year, to, to understand what this problem is versus this problem. You have to look at the companion passages in 1 Kings and Chronicles about this event. And then, of course, you have to actually read 1 Kings 1, 1 through 6 and read the companion Chronicles passages to know that, hi, I'm sorry, David was 77 when he died. There are seven chapters, hello, in 1 Chronicles starting at verse 22. One per year. That's a pretty typical Hebraic style. And then you got 10 years explained in 1 Kings 1 through 6. Now Jeremiah wrote Chronicles. He knew the timeline in Kings that came first. He's tracking to it. How come we aren't? I don't know. So the net result is that time is seven years still in abeyance because David died seven years later. It didn't shorten the time. See, here's 3150, 3156, beginning of the year makes it seven. See, when you, you end year six, you're beginning year seven, so it's year seven. Hopefully you'll understand that. You know, I'm coming up on my 60th birthday, so that's my 61st year. So it's seven years. Seven equals six in that sense. Okay? So we're still seven years late. That's the reason why the tribulation kept on being an extra hanging chad, even before the temple went down. Even before the temple went down. The temple's going down occasioned a second seven. If you add up the Daniel 9 numbers, you will get a shortage, an overage of 14, not 7, if you use solar years like the Bible does. But the scholars, even dispensational scholars, will use lunar years, and so they'll miss that extra 7. They're using lunar years in order to get rid of the extra 7, because they don't know what to do with it. Well, here's why. You got your first problem, see, 3096 to 3103. That is civil war. Okay? And it was already wait late. Because remember, we did going back to Noah. Okay? Going back to Noah. Already seven years late there. Then we got our boy here matures seven years early, but that's not going to stop the base timeline from Noah. So it continues with Jacob, who's right here. Still seven years late. Then we get to David, who is actually four years early as far as the civilization unit is concerned, okay, and becoming crown king. Okay, but there's a seven year civil war here. So you'll notice we got, we're three years into the new, four years early from the past, okay? With the result that, because David dies seven years later, we're still seven years past this deadline. That's why Solomon did it this way. The seven didn't get erased. It didn't get erased. And worse, on top of that, because we have another balancing problem, Christ has to be born a, a die a thousand years after this date. Even though David lived the extra seven years, it didn't make up for that because Solomon waited three more years before building the temple. 
if you had started temple construction in that year instead of this year, you wouldn't have the problem you do about the last half of the tribulation being reserved for Israel. Because, I'm sorry this is so complicated, but God is really balancing time. Moses was 54 years early here. Okay, so your net loss is due to David. Not da do, it's not David's fault. It's due to David dying here, but temple construction beginning three years later. Okay? That's why we got the three-year anomaly in history. Now, I'm going to post two other videos explaining this whole thing differently and see if they make more sense. If they don't, just yell at me.